Yeah. Hello world! What you're hearing is uh, a birthday song. It is Lang zal ze leven in in Dutch. So uh, happy birthday in Dutch. Um, and that's because we're celebrating two things uh, today. Uh, most important is we have a fantastic guest for the Friday catch-up. Tada! Phil Cockerell. Welcome, Phil. Hey, thanks, Emil. Great yeah. to be with you and uh, with Chris here. Yeah, Chris is uh, of course here as well because uh, Friday catch-up without Chris is no Friday catch-up, so he's here as That's well. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Philip, uh, just to jump into it straight away, uh, you were a colleague of us and now you are an employee of uh, Polyverse. Can you explain so that my mother understands what Polyverse does? Yeah, no problem. I uh, having ne uh, having never met your mother, that may be a little <laughs> bit tough. But but let me start uh, just by how I would explain it to my own mother. So uh, what Polyverse does is we aim to stop uh, security problems before they start. Um, really by um, solving the world's security problems once and for all. We know that uh, through research done by MITRE and by uh, a bunch of these uh, industry security experts that the number one attack vector for security is uh, through, through memory, memory based attacks. Okay. And so what Polyverse does is we inject diversity through, um, through code compilation to help improve security. Now what that means in terms that, that someone simple like me could understand uh, <laughs> and us. <is> that <laughs> and all of us, right? <laughs> um, is that uh, we take um, by injecting this diversity, we help create uh, an insulated barrier so that customer or so that customers are protected and attackers cannot use the same exploit that they would in one place in another. So imagine a world where you bought 50 safes. Right, and yeah. in all of your safes, you keep all of your precious, uh, precious uh, data and materials, and all your jewels and everything that's worth uh, the most to you. Right, and then uh, you, your critical flaw though is that for all of those safes, you have the same combination. That doesn't work, right? right? So yeah. the way that Polyverse works is that we change the combination for all of the different safes, meaning that you can't oh. just take the learning that you use on the first safe and then use it to open all of the other ones. We do that by changing the, uh, the memory offsets and the memory registers that applications use. And so when an attacker comes and tries to exploit a bug in the software, and let's face it, all software has bugs, right? Yeah, yeah. So when a attacker tries to exploit that, they just uh, cannot go any further. And we've right. got some really cool demos of how the technology works. And uh, we've got some live customers that are actually doing this today to protect their infrastructure, both their public-facing infrastructure and then also insulating very mission-critical systems, um, like, for example, the U.S. Uh, Department of Defense, um, excuse me, <laughs> the U.S. Department of Defense is uh, using polymorphing and polyverse to help protect their assets. All right, so, so if I try to explain it with my uh, only management and sales and marketing background, it's like if you have a throwing horse in, it can get out of the, uh, the horse or it can climb out, but that's where it stops. They cannot go any further than there. Right, and I think that we, um, if we, I wish we, maybe in a future uh, uh, webcast, what we should do is actually show a demonstration of how the technology works yeah. because uh, we can show you how um, memory exploits are uh, on a polymorph system, a polymorph Linux system are no longer operational and we'll, we can do a live demonstration to show how that works. All right, and well, I think we have to, also, yeah, go on there, Chris. Oh yeah, I, I've been thinking about security a lot because kind of this week's <laughs> model has been security everywhere, a lot of announcements. And while I think this is such a actually great step, especially working together with us at Zuse, um, is if, if I'm thinking about what am I selling to my customers, it's digital transformation, it's automation, we're going into a low code and no code world. And mm -hmm. what does that basically mean? You know, we're operating in cloud systems. That means we sometimes have non-technical professionals actually in the meantime building their own apps, databases, putting stuff onto a server, and nobody 
ever think so much anymore about the infrastructure, especially when we're in a cloud system and putting a layer kind of in between the creator and the user and the infrastructure to keep it safe after a process, after a predefined uh, yeah, way of working and, mm -hmm. and a piece of software just makes so much sense to me. And of course, I kind of, I don't know what it is, love the name Polyverse and Polymorphing, that just <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does. It totally sounds cool. I have to admit, I, I really wanted to come work for this company even before I knew what it did, just based on the name. It, it can be cool, but, but do you also have such a cool uh, um, a mascot like, like we do? No, we don't have the cool mascot. Oh. You know, what we do have is a really phenomenal partnership with Sousa that we're all very, very excited oh, about. Oh, yeah, you're stealing my next question. Go on, tell me what, uh, because I saw... Uh, some news here and there on social media uh, about the great cooperation between Polyverse and Sousa. Tell us. Yeah, no problem. So <laughs> the reason that we're so excited about this partnership is it actually means that Polyverse can take to our customers a full solution stack, right? And um, before we signed this agreement with uh, Sousa, the way that that worked is we would go to customers and sell them only the polymorphing piece, which means that they needed to then go and figure out how to deploy and put that in their environment with our consulting help, of course. Um, what I'm really excited about now with the SUSE partnership is that I can go to customers and my entire sales organization can go to customers and offer a full solution that includes a polymorphic version of SUSE Linux Enterprise Server from the get-go. That, that means that from the moment of install, our customers are, are have this additional layer of protection that Chris was just describing. Wow, okay. that's, you know, that's a bundle. Is it, is it, do you know that maybe? Because I'm probably not techy enough for that. Is it just a package we added to SLES, so kind of an RPM that gets pre-installed, or is there more behind that? There's a little more behind that because uh, the way that our technology works, uh, we actually run the packages through a polymorphing engine uh, in order to do that. And, and there's a bunch of uh, technical uh, guru stuff that, that we can, in a future episode, when we do the demonstration and when we do a, um, uh, we can bring one of our technical experts to actually have that, that very technical level discussion. Um, but there is more to it than that, and that's why we needed such a foundational partnership where, whereby we can offer this as a fully supported bundle uh, for customers. Because when I go into customers, obviously we want to not just sell a component, we want to sell a solution to their problems, right? And because of the, the world we live in now, you know, not just with the, the COVID, uh, the virus, and but also thinking about what you just said, Chris, about digital transformation and mm -hmm. uh, cloud adoption. Customers are having to move faster uh, and, and do more in this, and we don't want security to be an afterthought, right? That's, that's absolutely the, the worst case scenario because then the attackers win, right? By so using something like uh, the polymorphic SUSE Linux enterprise server, we create a situation where customers win and attackers lose. All right. Well, sounds as uh, I do understand what you're talking about. So that makes must make uh, a lot of sense then. Um, yeah, and, and and I started off with the uh, uh, happy birthday in Dutch. Uh, that's because of a birthday of something else. Any of you? Any idea? Uh, is it Chris's birthday? <laughs> is it your birthday, Chris? No, no. no, no? Not. Any no, other? Actually, any other guesses? Time at my age, good. It's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Now something uh, became 29 years old. Ah, yes. Yes. So yes. definitely not Chris. No, no, no. No. <laughs> so I think that that is the uh, the birthday of Linux. Yes, yes. Happy birthday, Linux. Happy birthday. Geburtstag, <laughs> Linux. So, uh, <laughs> we have a little bit German as well here. Linux. The distribution. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and um, uh, uh, for me, that was quite a uh, a, a big moment uh, when the birthday of uh, Linux is, is celebrated uh, because of the message of Linus Torvalds, of course, uh, at that time. Um, I cannot say that I was one of the people that actually saw it at that time, 
I'm with open source now around 20 years, so not 29 years. Um, when did you uh, got in, in contact business or maybe university time for the first time with uh, Linux, uh, Philip? Let's see, I think I was, um, I was in school, so I think that was about 1996, 1997. So right. I'm, I'm up there for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then at, at that moment, I was the editor. I still remember when when I started at uh, Zuse like seven years ago, and I had kind of my new hire training and the first sales kickoff I took part. Actually, Philip was one of the first people, you know, to stand in front of me, tell me about the greatness of Linux, really? of what we're doing, you know, and that that was really inspiring. And wow, you know, I, I think that's that's the great thing, you know, no matter how long. Each of us has been with Linux and with open source, just the magnitude of this very, very little message that Linux sent 29 years ago. Hey, I have a kernel called Linux, you know, and things probably won't happen, but they could. Yeah. You know, let's see what happens. Um, thinking about the software we use, the technology we use, the people we met, the companies we've worked for. Uh, you know, all, all the all the different stuff we've just done and seen in the context of Linux and open source. Is awesome, you know. That's that's what I'm celebrating, or I was celebrating. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, me too. Similar uh, that uh, from the birth of Linux came the birth of open source, and uh, that's uh, something that, uh, well, as we all know, uh, we find very, very uh, important. Um, okay, I think uh, we have uh, discussed most important things for this uh, catch up. It's a Friday catch-up, but actually we are lying because it's Thursday evening now. Don't tell anyone. Uh, but that's, that's because otherwise we had to wake up Philip in the middle of the night to do a recording and we didn't want to do that to you. I look much more uh, beautiful in the morning, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. Thank you, Philip, so much for joining us. This is really cool. We're kind of ramping up on guests in the meantime this is kind of a project between Emil and myself just chatting and it's awesome to have guests and uh, yeah thank you for having guests that can explain stuff to us in a way we understand so yeah yeah that's yeah. I think that's our mission where we invite guests so they can explain things we don't understand <laughs> 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 Not sure I'm that good, but I uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity and and uh, would love uh, I've been following you guys for a couple of uh, for a little while now. I'm <laughs> doing that and uh, anything we can do to help, we we appreciate it. All right, well, uh, start with like we ask everybody who is looking at this uh, video and likes it. Uh, please leave comments uh, if you have questions, complaints. We also deal with complaints. Uh, we do what else? Uh, likes, uh, everything. So if you can start with that, uh, Philip, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, we heard your invite to be part of uh, another uh, Friday catch up somewhere in the future. So um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for this. Last thing, I have a big invite for all partners of SUSE. Uh, so also uh, for you, Philip, because on the 9th and the 16th of September, we'll have our virtual partner summit. And uh, uh, please, everybody, subscribe, uh, at least if you're a partner, subscribe to this uh, great event because we have some super duper news for you. See you all next time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Philip. Thanks, Chris. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.